Peace family, Nikki Dillon here. So pleased to be a contributor on African Diaspora for this channel. Please make sure you give us a big thumbs up, thumbs up, and share the broadcast. Thank you so very much. What's good? This is Angela. About to do a reaction video um, about a sinister group of white supremacy females that America doesn't want to talk about. And they are called the WKKK. Let's tune in. Fair use act, fair use act. Now, family, I have been teaching on these some different platforms over the years for quite some time. But I believe this is a very important thing to take note of in this particular circumstance. We have been seeing an absolute epidemic of the terrorism of these characters. I mean, even Beyonce in her latest album, Top Call with Terrorists, and specifically talked about the characters in her, one of her songs. This is important, and of course, we discuss that here uh, on African Diaspora News Channel. The reason it's important is because sometimes we don't understand why we keep coming up against resistance or we are not moving progressively toward um, economic, black economic uh, freedom, you understand? And uh, this is important to understand that one of the main reasons is as I was going through this report, um, one of the things it discussed about the WKKK, for those of you that are not familiar with that, the WKKK is the women's Ku Klux Klan. And what folks have to understand is not only did the Ku Klux Klan resurge in the early 20th century, and this had to do with the movie uh, that was, believe it or not, premiered in the White House. Talk back to me, somebody. The Birth of, the na of, of a Nation. That was the original movie that had that name before uh, Nate Parker came out and did his about the Black Revolutionary. Nate Turner. Nate Turner. But I want you to look at the blueprint to black destruction in part. The WKK, the women's uh, branch of the Ku Klux Klan, they were considered more powerful. And in fact, do you know that they had labels where they were labeling the women the invisible government? One of the times of Appalachian... Yes, y'all, because y'all remember in them slave movies... The fucking, I mean, excuse me, the women were the most vicious. They wanted, they were telling the slave dude masters what to do, pretty much. And they were really torturing these men and women, y'all. They were torturing our ancestors, like, and it was these women behind it. They received also had uh, the word poison in it. Because when you take someone. That's why you got to be careful. You cannot eat everybody food and accept drinks from everybody. You can't just be letting anybody in your house. You cannot just, sometimes people come in disguises like they're trying to help, like they're, they're so sweet and nice, and at the same time, they're poisoning your ass. Be careful. Out through poison, it's not obvious. And in fact, sometimes when a person is poisoned, that person in and of themselves take either the food or the drink or something of that nature, not knowing because it's hidden. It's not a weapon that's all out, you understand? This was the role and the function of white women. See, when you, especially nowadays with these Lifetime movies, that's why I really like watching Lifetime because that shit helped me be discerning of people. That's why I stay so low, do low. I might only have one person around me. That's it. And I go around my kids and I go around whoever I feel that's cool. But nowadays, man, you can't trust not a nan, nobody. Because it'll be the same person in your household who you think you can trust. You can't trust that motherfucker. Matter of fact, and you got to watch your husband's. Your husband could be the motherfucker that's poisoning your ass because you might be worth more dead than alive with them insurance policies and shit motherfuckers be taking out on you. Be careful. Around America and our planet, doing what they do, it's not a small thing. One of the things that I wanted to point out for us today 
was that I'm reading here from this piece that says the women's Klux, the women's clan of the 1920s was not only a way to promote racist, intolerant, and xenophobic policies, but also a social setting in which to enjoy their own racial and religious privileges. <laughs> That's why some of these white Karen itches be just, they be looking at you, us melanated people, they just be looking at us all evil for no reason. I could walk past an elderly white lady, white man, and be like, good morning, the motherfucker look at me like I ain't shit. <laughs> I still would be like, good morning, god damn it, because I'm polite and I got manners. When you see people you're supposed to speak, who raised you? Not only that, it discusses the fact of why they emphasize wearing white. The early 1900s were dotted with white some Yeah. You, you especially got to watch these people who be looking like they so innocent. They be the devil. They self. You cannot judge a book by its cover. You got to test the spirits. That's why you got to ask a person who you represent. Are you spiritual or are you religious? When motherfuckers tell you they religious, run. Because they are operating out of uh, lies and deception. If you're spiritual, you're one with God. You got a one-on-one -on -one connection with God. So if a person, and then you got to watch spiritual people too, because it'd be spiritual narcissists. That's into magic and voodoo and hoodoo and hexing and witchcraft. So they wear crystals. They burn sage. They look like me and you. Some of the motherfuckers wear evil eye protection and they be the motherfucking demons or possessed or they be motherfuckers that you really ain't supposed to be trusting. Be discerning. And supremacy. White suffragist suits were not only designed for starkness, but to emphasize femininity. That many label suffragists as devoid of undercutting them as man should ugly. The color white unmistakably is also a symbol of purity. This is what they wanted to ensure that your conscious and subconscious minds are associated with white women and the white and all of this kind of stuff to associate them with purity. This is the reason why they were able to lure us to destruction. Literally, many of our lives, towns, and cities were ended. Many of our people were lynched. We were destroyed in large part because of the women in their lives. Not only that, in a book called The Royal Property, this beautiful uh, professor mentions that when she was doing one particular study in a particular area for over a 10 year study, Jeez, she found gorgeous. that 40% of the slaves in that particular region were owned by white women. And that it was the white women that would often go to court to ensure that she fought to keep her slaves in case there was some sort of a, a battle between her and her husband. Not only that, there were reports from some of the black enslaved that talked about how the woman was oftentimes even more vicious and that it was that Miss Anne, it was that Karen during child slavery that was responsible for setting the black woman to be assaulted, sexually assaulted, not just by another enslaved black man against his will, but it was that Karen that set her to be assaulted by her own man. <sighs> another sacrifice or another person found dead Memphis rapper Gangsta Boo found dead at 43 if y'all want to check it out there's a link it's not worth it being in that mu music industry that's why I'm setting up my own record label publishing and marketing and advertisement so that our people can create their music and and brand and brands and um be able to freaking get their real money and not have to sacrifice or be joining any of these dark cults satanic luciferian ass cults freemasonry all that's going to be destroyed the part is it was the white woman with the wk cash the women the women's who was that helped to strategically implement anti-racist policies, anti-black racism to the educational system and to churches 
and through social and civic groups. They are very dangerous. Pay attention to that. That's some undoing that we have to do. And make it a natural revolution to teach our own babies and to, of course, empower the black woman to do what the original woman is known for doing, and that's bringing life and taking charge of our families as the first mother. Come back to me, somebody. It's a reason we call it the mother tongue. There's so much magic in it, but I wanted to put that out to put some things into context so that you understand. Black women are some natural born mother energy. We are natural nurturers. We're, we're everything, all of the above. I'm every woman. It's all in me. Anything you want done, baby, I do it naturally. The city where you live, the place where you live, is intentional. It's socially engineered, but we have the wisdom and the wherewithal to begin to undo it if we first recognize what's been done and be about the business of doing it together, no matter our numbers, if we move as a unit. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Nikki Duke. I can't wait to hear your comments about this below. Be sure to check out my website. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. I ain't going to hold you up for too long. Uh, my name is Angela Tolliver, known as The Spiritual Plug, coming at you with another reaction video. Hope you took notes. Hope you listened. Hope you listened with your third eye as well as your ears. Enjoy this.